Hey, hi, welcome back to our Cisco SD1 course. In this video, we are going to bring up the vManage VM in our ESXi server and then do some required settings. Plus, let us also just assign an IP address to this vManage OOB so we can easily access this vManage via SSH or HTTPS later whenever needed. So, let's get started. Just a moment. The playlist for this complete Cisco SD1 course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. To encourage me, please do like, share and subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell icon so my effort will reach you on time. So, we are going to spin up a vManage with the OVA file and then we will edit the CPU and RAM as we require and also an extra hard disk for the vManage database. So, let's get into the ESXi first. Here I am in my ESXi server. Before we start spinning up the vManage, let me quickly show you where to download the vManage, vBond and vSmart softwares. Let's go to software dot cisco dot com and then you should go to access downloads here you can click on browse all routers sd van click again sd van here you see we do have the images for vh cloud v manage and v smart as well um, for the V bond, we don't have a separate image. We will turn the V edge into a V bond, right? V edge does have a daemon which we have to turn on so that it starts acting as a V bond. So there is no separate V bond image available. Let me click on this V manage software. And here, if you see, we do have OVA file and also we do have QCOW2. So this QCOW2 is for KVM. If I go down 2622. So this is the image which I have downloaded and I do have downloaded that already to my machine. So I'm going to quickly start bringing up the VM. I'm back in my ESXi. Let's click create register VM. And then let's click on OVA. Click next. I'm going to give the name as vManage. We have to select or drag drop the file. I'm going to click and then select downloads. Click on my docs image files. Here it is the vManage image. So I do have browsed through my directory and selected the vManage image. If you can read the vManage image states that it's 2622 and it's a OVA file. So let's click next. And I'm going to install it in the default data store. Click next. I'm going to leave these networks to be default. If in case you are doing this in production, you should configure specific VLANs on those. But in my hardware lab, I do have all those in the same VLAN. Everything is in the same broadcast domain. I'm going to leave it to be thin and then I'm going to remove power on automatically. Then let's click next. And I'm going to finish. If you see here, the process is 1%, it's going to take some time. Please remember the specs which I have given so far, if you see I do have selected thin and the specs which I'm going to give now, right, once it is uploaded, will not be from the Cisco recommendations. So if you are doing this in your production, you should follow the Cisco recommendations. Okay. I'm going to pause this video for a while. I'll see you at the other end once this is uploaded. Okay. The image file is uploaded successfully. Let me right click on the VM and go to edit settings. I'm going to reduce this CPU to be 8 and memory to be 16. Followed by that, I'm going to add a hard disk, a new standard hard disk and it's going to be 30 GB. This is the hard disk which I'm going to use for the statistics DB. Next, I'm going to select thin provisioning and uh, all others seems to be good so i'm gonna leave those things let me quickly validate cpu 8 memory 16 yep we are good let's save changes are done let's power this on now It's going to take some time to boot up. In the meantime, let me show you something. So the next steps are uh, power on vManage, which we have just done and get into the console. 
choose the vmanage persona so this is what i wanted to show you so there is something called vmanage persona in the latest versions you might not see this in older versions i'm not 100 sure which version it was introduced in but in any of these 26 releases it's there let me bring up this slide so this is what the vmanage persona is about there is three options first one is compute plus data and the second one is compute only and the third one is data only so we will always select compute plus data when we have a single vmanage but when we have a cluster right we do have options to run specific vmanages only with the compute and specific vmanages with the database i suggest you to look at the six node vmanage cluster bring up process that will have this data I personally haven't tested this, but on a high level, when you enable only compute, I hope that's going to enable only the specific services required to be a compute node. When you enable data, it's going to enable the statistics DB, those kind of things only. Okay, let's go back to our ESXA and see the status of our vManage. Let me right click the vManage and uh, let me bring up the console. So the default username password is admin, admin. It asks you to change the password. I'm going to change the password. So you see here, this is where you should select the persona. I'm going to do one. I'm going to use this vManage to be the compute and data. Obviously, we are going to use only one vManage, a standalone vManage. We should go with the compute and data. And then it's asking, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Here it is. If you remember, I do have added a hard disk of 30 GB. And uh, the vManage is prompting me that whether I can use this hard disk to save all the statistics. Yes, I'm going to say one. And uh, do you like to format? Yes. Here it is. So the vManage will now reboot and then come back. Once it comes back, we can start our initial configurations. As a part of this video, what I'm going to do is just assign an out of band management IP address to the vManage and then we'll validate the SSH and GUI access to the vManage and wind up this video. Let me pause for a while. It's going to take five minutes at least for the vManage to reload and come back. Okay, I can see the vManage backup now. Let me try to log in. Yes, we are into the vManage. Let me show you the interface. So it should be interface, show interface tab. In vManage, we do have those three NICs which we have configured and Ethernet Zero already got an IP from my DHCP server in home. So let's uh, ignore that for now. Later, we will circle back to this vManage and change this Ethernet Zero to be a tunnel. And that time we will assign it a static IP. For now, I'm going to make this Ethernet 2 as the out-of-band interface. For that, if you see by default, all the interfaces are in VPN 0. I'm going to move this interface to VPN 5 and 2 and assign an IP address. Don't get confused. I'm going to use one IP from the same subnet for this other VRF as well. Just because these two interfaces are going to be in separate VRF, vManage is not going to complain about that. Okay, let's start. Okay, let's start here by getting into config t. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, move Ethernet 2 out of VPN 0. Ethernet interface Ethernet 2. I'm going to give no interface Ethernet 2. And then let me get into VPN 512. If you remember, VPN 512 is the OOB VPN. There I'm going to call Ethernet 2. Assign, assign an IP 192.168.051. Let it be. Last 24, no shut down. Let's exit. I actually don't need a default route in my lab because my laptop and my jump box, everything is on the same subnet. But in case if you're doing this in production, you might need a default route. Let me do commit and quit. Let's validate the configurations on Ethernet 2. Ethernet 2 have the IP address which we have assigned and then it went into VPN 512 and it's up up. Now let's validate the reachability. Let me try to initiate a SSH session to this vManage 192.168.0.51. Create. Yes, you see it's successful already. 
Okay, I am into the vManage. Let's validate. Yeah. There is one more check which we generally do in the vManage that is check whether all the services are up. So request nms all status. Here it is. We expect to see all the services up. We have to give it some time. This application service uh, should be up for us to get into the HTTPS access of the vManage. That is the GUI. These proxy services, I don't think they will be up, will validate. Config DB should come up. All others are already up almost. SDAVC can be brought up optionally. So I don't think it will come up at all. Let's just wait for the application service to come up. Also, I'll show you some other commands. So request NMS application server status. We can query for the specific service also. You see it's already up. Let us validate this one more time before I try logging into the GUI. Okay, I can see proxy there. Yeah, so it is expected to come up. Application server is up, config DB, coordination server is up, messaging server up, statistics DB, everything is up. As I told you, I'm 100% sure here this SDAVC is an optional thing which we have to turn on. Okay, let me bring up a browser and let's browse to this vManage IP address. Okay, here in the browser 192.168.0.51 colon 8443. That's the port it will respond on and it's going to be HTTPS. Yep, I can see it. Okay, so it's going to take some time. I'll connect back when the vManage is ready. As you see, the vManage is up now. We can log into the vManage GUI with the credentials. This is the vManage dashboard. We are successfully able to SSH to the vManage and as well as we are able to log into the GUI of the vManage. We'll stop here. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it was informative. Do comment below for any queries or suggestions. The playlist for this complete Cisco SD1 course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. If you want to encourage me, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you think some of your friends or colleagues will find my content or channel useful, do share and also do not forget to hit the notification bell icon.